Okay, so money making formula 2.0. So um, this meeting is divided into two. All right, we have um, today is the day one and tomorrow is day two. So today, day one, we're going to talk about biblical principles for making money. All right. So um, our reference as humans, we are, you know, the, the spiritual realm controls the physical realm. If we must be able to do things here on earth successfully, we need to make sure we are getting enough assistance from the realm of the spirit. As Christians, you understand, we have to make sure we are following God's principle in doing our businesses, in doing whatsoever we do to make money. See, God is not only concerned about your attending church, your life in church. Everything about your life is important to God. So the first thing I want to talk about in this meeting is the biblical principles of making money. When you know these principles, when you know these formulas, you will see that making money would become as easy as anything. All right, so let's get started. First, let me talk about myself. My name is Courage. I started business from a very young age because I've always been um, a business enthusiast. I've always wanted to earn money for myself. So when I was very young, I used to cut vegetables around our house and I would go and sell to people and earn money. There were times where I had to sell kerosene. You know, I'll buy kerosene like five liters and then sell in smaller portions in order to earn money. So there were several times my parents had to tell me, you are not hungry. Nobody, you know, you, are, you have way to stay. You have food to eat. Why are you always doing something to make money? Why, why are you looking for money when you have everything you, you know, you want? Everything, you know, the basic needs, you have everything. So why are you always trying to look for money by all means? So the, the thing is that I've always had this entrepreneurship spirit, Okay. Even when I entered University of Benin, um, the first thing I started with was that I joined this Jumia, um, Jumia sales rep. So I became a Jumia sales rep. I started ordering items for people and I was being paid for that. Then after that, I also started doing, after that, I also started um, drawing. I also started drawing. So there were times where I even started drawing was that I just loved art. I just loved when I see pictures. So what I did was, what I did was to go online and, you know, do some research about drawing. Then I also met one or two persons that taught me about drawing. And that was how the entire thing started. All right. So I started earning money from drawing. And then what else again? I, there was one time I started selling recharge card at um, Owan Car Park in University of Benin. You know, I was selling charge card at night from 8 p.m. to 10, 11 at night. I was selling recharge card. I've always loved business. There was a time I was selling data. You know, there was a way guys were, you know, activating data bonus on, on SIM cards. And I would go around and sell the SIM cards to people. You know, back then when I was in O3, the guys that, that make the SIM, that make the data, they are in the hostel and then they are selling for maybe they're selling eight gig for like 500. I'll get it from them and I'll go to those cafe where they are doing all this online, online, um, um, online stuff, maybe, you know, payment of school fees where they do those things. I go to meet them and then they would actually buy my data for a higher amount. All right. So while I'm buying from the hostel for 500, I'm selling to them at 1000. So I was making a lot of money from that as well. So I've always wanted to do business. So it got to a time where I had some money with me. All right. Then I thought of which business should I do next? So I asked a few friends of mine. They told me to buy a camera and start renting them out. But I, all of a sudden, um, there was a day where I just saw, I just saw someone, a photographer in an event. You know, the way he was capturing images, I just liked him. So I asked him, please, I want to be a photographer. What do you think, you know, what's, what do I need to know? How will it cost me to become a photographer? So he told me that I needed like five years or more to become a professional photographer. So I now asked him, if you cannot hear, please. Um, I asked him, so he told me that I needed five years or more 
to learn photography professionally before I can be part of, before I can become a professional photographer. So I asked him, what camera should I buy? So the, he did not give me so much encouragement about photography, but however, all right, so they told me I needed about five years to learn to, learn to become a professional photographer. So um, I discovered a guy online who was a photographer. He started telling me more about the camera. I bought the camera from him and then my entire photography just started. All right, so I've had experiences. In fact, when I had a studio inside campus, okay, because I, I had my first studio in Eco Sodi, you know, that was where I was staying at my final year. So then I had a studio later at um, June 12th inside University of Benin. From there, okay, so, <laughs> all right, all right. So from there, I, I moved to town. So, but I have had, you know, I've had experiences in different businesses. There were some businesses I did that I did not, uh, I, I, I didn't, I didn't gain anything from it. I did um, some businesses that did not work out. All right. So from the experience I've gathered, I have decided to share today. All right. So I want to proceed to what we have today. So before we we'll begin to talk about the principles that we need, I need to first of all define some terms. All right, so I need to first of all define some terms that um, we're going to be using frequently during the course of this um, during the course of this our our meeting today. So there are two words that are going to be very frequent, which is first money. Money. What is money? What is money? All right, so. Money is a means of exchange. All right, so it's a current medium of exchange in form of coins, banknotes, you know, uh, that is create. This um, money was created by man and not God. So we should know that whenever we are praying to God for money, God did not create money. Money was created by man as a means of exchange. All right, so. When we ask for money, God answers us in different forms. God answers sometimes in form of favor. God answers sometimes in form of, you know, um, um, God answers in form of an idea, gives you an idea, you know, to be able to do some business that will bring money. God answers in form of ideas and all of that. So money is just a means of exchange. All right. So money is not what defines that you have wealth, wealth or not. Money is not wealth, okay? There are some persons that they may not have so much in their bank account, but if they need anything, they get it. So we can't, you know, you know, most times people just associate wealth, associate, you know, riches to only money or having properties. The best form of wealth eh, is, in, is, is in what we call social capital, having social capital, having people, in different ranking positions who are willing to give you favor anytime you request do you understand what i'm saying so it's more than so don't just limit your life to just having money all right so but we're going to talk more about we're going to talk more about it during the during this meeting so we have two extremes about money there are two extremes about money and the first extreme that we have is that money is evil. Money is evil. There are some people that have this, they, they have this feeling that money is evil. And this, their interpretation is drawn from a scripture that they misinterpret, which is, for the love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. What is stated there is the love of money, not money. So money is not an evil thing. Money is not an evil thing. All right? So the other, okay. So money isn't bad, all right? Money is not bad at all. It's the love of money that is bad. The love of money is what leads to greed. And greed is what has resulted to a lot of crimes that we have today. Crimes like you know, fraud, crimes like robbery, all of that is because of the love of money, because of greed. 
So money isn't a bad thing. Then there's another extreme that has an opinion that money is good. Their own opinion is that money is good. Money is a good thing. And this is drawn from a scripture that they misunderstand as well, which is Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, that says that money answered all things. All right, that's the last part of it. Money answered all things. But however, if you read that scripture properly, this is the good news translation of that scripture. It says, feasting makes you happy and wine cheers you up, but you can't have either without money. When money, when money was being mentioned in that particular scripture, it was talking about what the what it was talking about some things it mentioned earlier. That these things, feasting, wine, you can only get those things when you have money. It is money that we purchase them. So it was not talking about that everything about your life, it is money. You know, when you have money, you have everything. No. Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So even if you gain the entire world, that does not that does not count as wealth. Wealth is not because you have this you have physical treasure here on earth. All right, and like I said earlier, there are some people that they might not have so much money in their account, but when they want favor from maybe the president of Nigeria, maybe some ranking people, those people will provide the favor. Those people are well; they have what we call social capital. All right. So this is, this um, extreme part of saying money is good um, is not typically correct from scriptures. There are some scriptures you also read, like there was something that happened in Matthew chapter nineteen verse sixteen. It said, "Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good shall I do that I may have eternal life?" And Jesus answered and said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. There is none good but one, that is God. See, the word good, God reserved that name for himself. That word good. So we should not ascribe it to money, that money is good. No. We should not ascribe that, that quality. Say it, so I, I wrote here that it is an offense to God if we ascribe the quality God reserved for himself to something else man created. So Jesus taught so much about money and his dangers that you will even be scared to have money. One of them, he says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or he will, devote, he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Another version will say you cannot serve God and mammon. Why? Simply because <laughs> there are what we call dangers of wealth, dangers of riches. Jesus also said, um, Mark chapter 10, verse 25, he said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus has to say about wealth, about riches. So you should know that if you're going to make money, if you're going to earn money, there are a lot of dangers that comes with it and you must be very careful so as not to lose your soul to money. All right? So if you read a lot of Jesus' teachings about the dangers of riches, you won't want to be rich. But here is my conclusion. Money is not a good thing or a bad thing. But money takes the shape of the heart of the person that has it. A wise man once said, show me your transactions in the last two years, and I will tell you what sort of man you are. What he was saying is that, show me what you do, did to make your money and show me what you spent your money on. Then I will know the kind of person you are. You don't need to tell me anything. You don't need to show me who you are. I would have known by how you made your money and what you spent your money on. So please note that money is a good servant, but a very wicked master. So put money in its proper place as your servant, not your master. The moment you put money as, at its proper place, which is that money is your servant, then making money will be easy. So let's talk about the second word we're going to be using very frequently in this meeting, which is business. What is business? What is business? We're, we're not going to define things 
based on what the secular world has given to us. All right. So we're going to define things majorly. If you have, if you have um, questions, we'll just wait to the end. All right. So I'm going to take take questions at the end. Thank you. So business. What is business? The best way I would define business for you is according to this scripture. Luke chapter 19, verse 11. And as he heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem because they thought, and because they thought the, that the kingdom of God should come, should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and he delivered unto them, thank you, all right, he called his ten servant and he delivered um, them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. That is the definition of business. It means occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. So you know the story. So, um, okay, let's just read through. Uh, but the servant hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he had returned, having received the kingdom, he, he commanded the servants to. Um, to be called unto him, and uh, to whom he had given money, in that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came first, came the first, Lord, thy pound I gave ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, because, because thou had been faithful in very little, thou have thou uh, authority over ten cities. And he said unto him, and the second one came, saying, Lord, that pound I gained five pounds, and said, Likewise unto him, be also over five cities. Another came saying, Lord, here is thy pound which I have kept and laid up in a napkin. You didn't notice what this one did. This one did nothing. All right? It's safe. The money was not lost. So, for I feared because thou had an austere man, thou takest up and, okay, and many things. And he said unto him, Out of thy mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest not. Okay, so we know the story, all right? So let's not waste time. Let's proceed. So I just want to bring the definition of... I just want to bring the definition of business. So I will simply define business as... Biz, you know that word, business? If you split it into two, that's at the, at the middle. Business, you know, when you split it into two, you will discover that it means busyness. All right? busyness which means to be busy with a particular assignment or a purpose all right that is what business means it means be occupied be busy with a particular purpose or assignment all right so we're going to talk more about those assignments and purpose and everything later on but you should know that you should not stop you should not it's not something that you should stop that you should be discouraged it is an instruction from God, all right? Then, the secular world may have a different definition. However, as believers, the, um, however, as believers, the moment we see business as God sees it, then we will understand that being a fashion designer, being a photographer, being a doctor, being an engineer, and all other work you can think about, they are all work of God. So, whenever, you know, don't think maybe being a fashion designer eh, is as though you are not serving God. No, that is also a work you are doing for God. You are busy with something. You are busy with an assignment. You are busy because there are two great commandments in scriptures. The first great commandment is love the Lord your God with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your might. The second one is love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two major greatest commandments in scriptures. Everything that God instructs falls into these two. So when you are a fashion designer, you are doing it, you are, you are engaging with people. All right? So but when you do it as a business for God, you know, when you are going to your business place, you will do it as though you are going to church. So don't see it as though you only serve God when you come to church. When you are going to your place of work, it is also service to God. So next time you are going to the office, don't see it like something that doesn't concern God. God is concerned about your business. In the book of Luke chapter 5, you realize that something happened that Jesus came to meet, um, meet Peter. 
used his boat you know, to preach. After preaching, he said, let's go, and, let's go and fish. And he said, let's go and fish. Peter said, we have tried all night and we caught nothing. But at, however, at your word. So Peter followed Jesus. So when they got there, they caught fishes such that Peter has never caught before. So Jesus is, in, is also interested in your business. He's interested in making you succeed as well. All right? However, Peter had a special ministry. If not, Peter would have continued in the fishing business and he would have received a blessing that day that would change his business forever. There are many people in scriptures that did business that were wealthy. So, being a fashion designer, being a photographer is also a work for God. Don't look at yourself as though you are serving, you are serving yourself. You are serving, no, you are working for God, doing and you don't think it is secular. No. God is concerned about everything concerning your life. I just want to quickly tell us the difference between, you can drop your question, the difference between being self-employed and being employed to work under somebody. Please note that being self-employed does not mean you are a king. And being employed to work under somebody does not mean you are a slave. We have a generation where we have a lot of people who are interested in doing business, but not all of them have the grace or have the ability to do business. See, doing business yourself is hard work. <laughs> it is hard work. You are bearing the risk alone. If money, if you lose money, you lost. If you gain, you gain. You have to think of how to promote your business. There are so many things that will fill your mind whenever you are doing business for yourself. But when you are working under somebody, those, that person does those things. The person only assigns you your responsibility and that is what you do and you get paid. And your money is sure every month. But doing business, you are not sure. This month might be good and next month will be bad. So, if when do I recommend that you should be an entrepreneur, do business for yourself? I recommend to you to do business for yourself, to be an entrepreneur, be self-employed, if these two things are present majorly, or three things. Number one, if you have the grace, all right? So maybe I will not, but that is number one to me. Maybe let me not put in number one so I don't look as though I'm making this thing too spiritual. Number one, let me change number one to if you have the passion for it. Not everybody has passion for business. Not everybody has passion to, to do business. Do you understand? Not everybody has it. While you are here thinking of a business idea, somebody else is, you know, is thinking of working somewhere. See, there are some people that are working in some offices that they are earning millions a month. Why there are some persons who have their business and yet they are any they are not any anything they are losing money. However, there are still some people who are working somewhere that are earning five thousand a month, and there are some entrepreneurs that are earning millions a month. I know, but everybody's grace are different. Everybody's passions are different. So identify your passion and follow it. See, being and uh, being employed. Yeah. There's one thing if you if you don't have passion to do business of your own, go and look for employment somewhere and pray that God will make you a blessing anywhere you find yourself. That you know the way Joseph was, Joseph found himself in Potiphar's house and he brought so much blessing that he became the head. You are supposed to work in a place that they will love you so much that they will not want you to go. That should be what you should aim to be. You should make sure that so much blessings have been released into that atmosphere because of your presence. So if you're going to do business, make sure you have the passion. Then number two, make sure you have the ability for it. Make sure you have the ability for it. Because doing business is hard work. You will not sleep. There are many things that you will not have rest. 
When you are you are working so, for someone, you will go by eight, you come back by four. If you are an entrepreneur, eh? You are working around the clock. Maybe you have Instagram page, you are managing it. Somebody will message you around 10 in the night. You will respond. You are still at work. Oh. You are not at home. So even if you are, you are pressing your phone, as far as the client is making inquiry, please, I want to do a photo shoot. This, when, this one, and you are responding. Eh? You are still at work. You have not closed. So you must understand which one do you really want to go for. For me, I recommend also that if you are just starting, you want to do business, but you don't have capital, go and work under somebody. When you work under somebody, Bible says, if you are, if you are faithful, he eh? said, if you are faithful to another man's service, then God will commit to you your own riches, your own resources. So some reasons, some reasons why some people don't have a, a thing of their own was because they've not served under some persons to release that grace upon their life. So being self-employed or being employed, you have to think a lot before you make your decision because doing business is hard work. It's hard work. So the first principle I gave was trust in God. Trust in God, all right? So I told us that we must not trust in well in riches. One of the ways we know that we trust in money is that our happiness depends on it. The moment your happiness depends on it, then your trust is in money. So I also mentioned that everything we need from God, we must ask. Even the things you can afford, ask God for everything. Ask God, you see that God will supply. All right, ask. Then I told us that we must be diligent. Poor men will always, uh, lazy men will always be poor. If you are lazy, you are going to be poor. Only people that are hardworking that get rich. I also told us that anytime we do business with people, we must make sure we are not losing our integrity because if you must choose one, take a good name. It is better than great riches. And I told us that we must be, con we must be content. That means whatever God has given to us, if today you make 10 naira, be satisfied, be content, and give glory to God. Be grateful. Only that person who, is, who has been grateful for the little that God gives him will be grateful if God gives him more. So God doesn't need to test you with $1 million to know if your heart will not be stolen away. To know that your heart will not be stolen away, if he gives you $10, it will, it will give him enough, enough information of what you will do with $1 million. All right? So don't compete and don't compare. And you must have this mindset at the back of your mind every day, every time, which is you are not the only one God wants to bless. So be happy when people succeed too. You are not the only one. For example, I have a friend of mine who has done, because I knew when he was still, you know, his, his, his photography, I knew when, you know, things were still difficult. And God took him very far. I know you people know him, Kashokwe that he's not shooting for Pepsi, shooting for basket mount. I'm so happy for him. And I keep, when I see him post some things, I will send him a message. I don't, do, I don't usually comment publicly, but I will send him a message that, ah, guy, you are making Benin proud. You know, I'm happy I know you. You know that kind of thing. I'm happy for him. I'm not shooting for Pepsi, all right? So I'm happy that he's, he, he, he's doing well, all right? So you should know that there is enough money to go around. He's going around. There's enough money, so not only for you, Enough money to go around. Then give always. Make sure you are you are an habitual giver. All right. And there are four persons, four categories of persons you must give to every time, which are um, strangers, orphans, widows, widows, and those that are in need. Strangers, orphans, and widows. Then those that I need. Make sure you give. Then I also mentioned that you must give honor. Honor to your parents because of the sacrifices they've made for you. Honor to your pastor, to your, you know, to, to your friends because they've been there for you, because of who they are to you, because you love them and you value them. Honor them with your substance. Not just say it. Not just say it. Even if it is a drink, a bottle of drink, give them thank you for being my friend. Give honor. It has spiritual blessings too. So 
I also talked about rest. You must not walk, 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 walk. No. You must learn to rest and allow your workers to rest too. It shows to it, it shows that yes, indeed, you trust in God. Not that you are working morning, afternoon, night, you are working as though if I don't put if I don't work now, I'm not going to eat. No. Your father knows your needs and he will always provide. If God created heaven and earth and created all things and he still found a found day to rest, an immortal personality, God, God, what about you that is man? Take time to rest so you don't kill your body. Relax your mind, take holidays, take time, relax your body. And I also mentioned that the tenth point I mentioned was that thou shalt not steal. Thou shall not steal. What I mean by stealing is that the moment you borrow money from somebody and you refuse to pay back, you are a thief. It is simple. You have stolen. If you, the money you are supposed to use to pay your rent, as at when you are supposed to pay, you are doing something else with it, and your landlord is asking you, you are a thief. You have stolen. If your workers, after they worked for you a whole month, when you are supposed to pay at the end of the month, you did not pay, you are a thief. So pay your debt. People that you are owing, pay them. Don't be using stolen money in your business. It will crumble your business. All right? So now I have questions here. I said, okay, she's a fashion designer. She's very creative. People like her work a lot, but she's not good on posting her work on IG and other social media platforms. What's your advice? That is one of the things I'm going to share tomorrow. All right? Which is marketing. How many of us, we know Coca-Cola, right? We know Coca-Cola, we know MTN, we know Glow. Please, do you know that those companies I just mentioned, they are very big companies, yet they still do adverts. Don't you see MTN adverts? Don't you see Ete adverts? Don't you see Glow adverts? Coca-Cola, they will put their Coca-Cola pictures everywhere as if you don't know about them already. If those people can do marketing as big as their business, you should do marketing too. See, the social media, the internet has made work easier for us. When you open your store at number two, something, something, something streets, you are, the, the possibility of people seeing your banner, your poster, your office, eh? the number of people seeing your office, let's assume it is 50% of people in that area. And 50% of people in that area will be like 500 persons. So you have 500 potential customers. But when you go on the internet, on the internet we have billions of people. Only, if only 50% sees your work, that is 500 million people. Those are your potential customers. So you should promote your business. Put them online. Do sponsored adverts. Do something creative to engage people on your post. I'm going to share more on that tomorrow. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Yuki, I did not get, okay, your question, let me see. Consistency in terms of growing your, your business. For you to have consistency in growing your business, what you should, first of all, know is that you need to, because tomorrow we're going to talk about it, you need to have what we call plans and budgets. Let me tell you, for example, when I started, the first thing I said when I started my photography, I told myself, within the next one month, I want to have 500 pictures that has my name and logo on the internet. That's what I said. Whether I'm making money from those pictures or it is free, I started shooting every day, everywhere. Snap people, send them their pictures, they will post. Then I don't have another target that by the end of that year, that I want to be a pro in photography. And I started working. The next year, my, ta my target was Whenever anybody mentions anything photography, eh, in belief, you just whisper photography, let my name come. When you just mention photography, I want my name to appear. I want my name to be mentioned. It's my target. That's why it is getting there. A client met me some, some weeks ago and said, I called this person. He said, meet and call it. I called this person, meet and call it. That is it. It's already getting there. The stage I am now, my next target is when I post a picture, I want people to be surprised that I'm a Nigerian. And then they will be even more surprised than I'm in Benin. That's my next target. 
my next target is not only about beginning again my next target is anywhere you see my pictures online you'll be arguing with somebody this person not be nigeria again the person will snap this picture nothing be nigeria and then you will check my bio you see that i'm in nigeria the next thing you will check you see that i'm in benin a lot of people have been messaging me ah, uh, where is your studio i say i'm in benin oh ah, your works are so good but i'm in lagos at the moment i say i cannot travel i cannot travel so that's what i told them so you must have targets if you don't have targets you will not be consistent if all you are just doing is you know just doing the business the way you see it doing the business have targets i have a plan after now there's something i want to do in benin that's never been done before a bad photography all right i have targets i have targets so you must have targets. if not you will never be consistent you will always be going up and down simply because you are just beating around the air you are beating around you must have a plan when god was going to make my say let us make man according to our image and likeness to have do so they had a plan so when they were constructing and making man it was the plan they were looking at it must have our image so they were checking everything to make sure it is complete so if you have your business check make sure you have a plan this is i also have you know monetary plans that all business to outshine people to show that they have money or anything no people that are doing it with godly mindset how do you start in a location that is not really so commercial so I was talking with somebody the other day. I said, for example, if God gives me an idea to start a food business, hmm? because I don't know anybody, the, the first thing I would do is, where does my what, where is my business required? Where where are my customers? You don't just start business and do it anywhere. You must find where are your customers. Before I opened my studio in town, I located where my customers were. When I was in Ekosodi. I was doing my photography. Once people would come and snap, but I said, ah, there's no studio inside school. Let me have a studio inside school. I, I was saying it. God, I want to have a studio inside school. I want to have a studio inside school. One day I was bold enough. I met the SUG president. I said, ma, please, I would like to have a studio space inside school. You know, I'm a photographer, this and that. I said, okay. Then he said, go and meet my secretary. I met the secretary. He said, then we talked and then we started making, we started making the plans. And I pay the money and I build my studio. So if I'm going to sell food, for example, where's the place people need food? The, where people need food are places where people come to work very early. They don't have time to go home to cook. So places like the bus park. So I will not bring my packaging. Maybe the way I package my food or maybe the food I sell, I will not bring it to that location. So it's not compulsory that because you stay in Kobayi, you do business and be selling Ikubai first. No, find where your customers are. If your customers are not Ikubai, where my parents has my parents, where my parents are, is in um, a place called Saint Savior. That place, the road was very bad, but the road is good now. But it was very bad. It was not accessible. I have a place I can use for free there, but I will not do my business there because my customers are not there. When I was living there, my parents they only snap us pictures once a year that was Chris, christmas day or new year day you will choose one of the days you cannot snap the two days so if you are snapping on christmas day you will wear your christmas clothes and your new year clothes and snap and then go and change so i cannot go and shoot in i cannot go and open a studio in that area so i went to a location so i saw that universe students this school is an environment where young people they like pictures so i'm doing my business there so but when you now have a name you cannot go to any location and you realize that because you have a name, people will follow you. So, but when you don't have a name, locate where your clients are because they will not come and find you. They will not look for you. Your business. You will realize many things that will come up. You see how? <laughs> have you had case where <laughs> you <laughs> the way it is? Ask people. A lot of people are entrepreneurs. You and you have studios or you you have um, offices in town. If you put banner, local government will come and meet you. They will ask you for money. You will pay light bill. You will pay water bill. You will pay rent. You will pay things. All those things, if you don't, if you don't have capacity to handle them, you can't. So if you're going to raise money for business, the general way, the general way I recommend is get a job. Another way I can also do is, I can also tell you is that you should get help from people around you. When I 
open my second studio. All right. I got a loan from my parents. So because they are my parents, I did not pay interest. Because they are my parents, I can pay anytime I like. I got a loan. So get help from people around you. Get help from people that care about you, that love you. So that's another way you can get money for your business. So any other question, please? I do many things. I'm not just a photographer. I do many things. And for my photography, I branched out. All right? I teach people, and I've earned a lot of money from teaching. I edit for people. I retouch photographs for people. I've earned money from that. I have photography materials I have for sale. I've earned money from that. I help people install apps on their system. I earn money from that. I help people to buy cameras and things from US. I help, I get money from that. So, so I do a lot of things. So it is just in It is something that comes out from me. So you might not be the same. You're welcome. So what's your name? Galaxy J7 Prime. You know, your name is not yet. You should have renamed it. <laughs> Thank you, Stella Maris. Thank you. Thank you. So do we have any other question? Any other question so we can call it a day? Time is already. Okay, so this is 9.50. 9.50 so by 10 dots we are going to end i'm really new to using zoom okay you just go and edit your settings i can't wait to join tomorrow's class thank you thank you all right all right so okay pastor Gosui, what what's your question sir quickly before we end the class sir that's my pastor pastor Gosui. Thank you very much. Galazi J7 Prime, what's your name? So I will not be calling you Galazi J7 Prime. What's your name, please? Okay, would you debunk the proper, the debunk the proper saying that, okay, the popular, sorry, popular saying that Jack of all trade, master of none. Um, well, 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 <laughs> because you are, you, Okay, Tosin, okay, Tosin, okay. As Pastor Gosui, you have made the question more difficult to understand. Please, make your question easier. Debunk the popular saying that Jack of all trade. Please, can you, your question is big. <laughs> Before I will answer something else. I'm waiting for you, sir. Can the person be excellent in different business? Of course, of course. You can be excellent in different business. Yes, of course. Let me, um, let me, should I show you this? Um, I want to show you a scripture. Just hold on. Acts, Acts chapter 7, verse 22. So I want to I show you this scripture. Acts chapter 7, verse 22. So let me show you this scripture now. So can you see that? <laughs> All right. All right, so see this question. Yeah, see this scripture. Acts 7, verse 22. From the New International Version, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. Okay. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. 
in all in all so if you notice moses and you know from this scripture if you read it properly read about the accounts of moses he was educated in the wisdom of egyptian and he, in all the wisdom of egyptians and he was excellent so it is grace you know, everything boils down to how we are wired, how we are designed. In my little life and experience of God, I've encountered people that they don't need to pray before they start seeing into the realm of the Spirit. Why? Some of us, like us, will have to fast and pray before we might see some certain things they will see, even when they are eating. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, you need to make sure you understand the grace that works for you. So that's why I'm not preaching to people, do what I am doing. No, you can't do everything I am doing because we are not wired the same way. So there's another scripture I want to show to you. So look at it, look at the scripture. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. To so these four men, God gave them, it is not anybody, wisdom. God gave them knowledge and understanding of all, you see the word, all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel who understood visions, dreams, and of all kinds. So, if you get it from God, you can, you can understand all, you can be a master of all. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see the word used all. So it's if you get the grace from God, you can be. So, but my own particular understanding of or what I would say to people is that we are not all the same. So some but some persons can do this particular thing very well, and you might not be able. Me, I'm the type that I'm not so organized. All right. I can have many things clashing, many things clashing. I may not be able to arrange my things properly. Simply because I am engaging with so many things. Sometimes I'll remember that, oh, I have two events tomorrow. I will not be trying to arrange who we go and do this, who we go and do that. You see the bad part? So, we are not all the same. So, but know that if Moses could learn all and he was powerful in speech and in action, it was from God. And these four, four, four young men that were in, in, a, in a strange land, the Bible specifically told us God gave them. So if God can give them, God can give you understanding of all, all the business you put your hand and you'll be excellent in all of them. And we know the account in verse 19, the Bible said that they were 10 times better than their equals. So for them to be 10 times better than their equals, they made us know that it was not their, their effort. It was God that gave them. So any question? Pastor Gosu, have I answered your question? Thank you, Tosin. God bless you. So, have I answered your question? Is there any other question? Okay, we have a lot of people have, have, have left the, the chat. So, we're going to end this right away. So, thank you very much for joining us today. And I want you to please join us tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to share more about um well, well, tomorrow we're going to share more about you know the principles for we're going to share more about the principles that we use for um for our business different business that we do we're going to share how you can grow your business from where it is to where it should be okay so i want to appreciate us once again and see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. So I'm going to have this video recorded and um, I would share it when the time is right. So have a wonderful evening. God bless.